Hello everybody, this is Vidya Chess Master Sohan Farke uh, from Think Chess and we are back to the second game which concluded yesterday. It was a roller coaster ride I would say and uh, both had, both the players had chances and uh, it goes to show like uh, the challenger who is motivated is here to dismantle the champion and he is eager to take the throne. So Ian Nepopniachi uh, of Russia uh, made a draw in the first round, which we analyzed. Now the second game also was concluded in a draw, but this game was uh, totally different than the first game, and it was quite a fight, and both sides felt that they had a chance to crack each other. So let's see the game. Uh, White was Carlson. Everybody thought one should one move should be the first move should be e4, but it was d4. So in this, uh, after d4, uh, the pet line, or I would say the the line which uh, Ian ne Nepo, I will call him Nepo. Everybody calls him Nepo. So the Nepo used to play the Grunfeld defense, which starts with the move knight f6, c4, and g6, and knight c3, d5. This is what his usual opening is. But again, as you can see, uh, in a world chess championship, um, you need to prepare much more than what you really are. So you cannot just have a casual approach that this is just a game I will play. To some extent, yes, but uh, this is a world championship. It is once in a lifetime for some, for many, not some, for many, it's a one-time uh, place to be. So you want to make most of it. So you prepare like crazy. So this is what uh, uh, he plays. Uh, uh, Nepo. So let's start with the knight f6 and uh, Nepo was first to change and he is showing that he wants to go into the Ninzo Indian. And if white goes knight c3 then the move is bishop b4. This is called the Ninzo Indian defense. A very solid approach but totally different than Grunfeld. Okay anyways let's see what happened in the game. Uh, Carlsen played knight f3. Black slashed with the move d5. Now it started with knight f6 but now the move the position has transposed into qgd. That is Queen's Gambit decline. Now, one way to go is Queen's Gambit decline with knight c3. And the other way is to go into the fiancé to bishop and it is called Catalan opening. So maybe it has come from some Spanish player because Catalonia and Catalan, this is, this is uh, similar to that. Okay, the move came g3 and this transposed into Catalan. So now we'll just make the opening moves. Okay. Now, white slowly is going to play queen c2, knight d2, maybe, and play b3, bishop b2, and he will play knight e5. This is how slowly this position works. It is possible to play the move c6 and play solidly, but uh, black chooses the more dynamic way, and finally, since this bishop is on g2, so this bishop cannot come to c4. So, black plays on, takes on c4. Now white tries to recapture it and now black slashed with the move b5. Suddenly this looks as if what the hell black is doing. Has he lost a rook? But uh, this is a world championship. So you cannot get this type of free points in any game. Now there are tons and tons of theory and preparation. The whole idea is to win this pawn back and this bishop is a monster now and it controls the light square. And once if Black gets the c4 pawn. Just imagine there is no c4 pawn. White's position is way better because of this bishop on g2. So black will try to hang on with this uh, pawn on z4, c4. And it is rightly said, uh, if you are suffering, suffer for something. So black is suffering a bit, but he is suffering for something. He has got one pawn and he will try to hang on with it. So white played a very natural move, knight e5, uh, which is dead natural. And here... Uh, the right move here is uh, c6, even knight d5 is, is also possible. Okay, black played c6 and there are some moves happen. Knight d5 came and white played knight c3. As I say, black is trying to hold on with the spawns and white is trying to disrupt it. So, white played knight c3 hoping that uh, he will take one day or maybe 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 for one day i don't know we'll we'll see okay so f6 kicks the knight naturally we have to go back 
but uh, it has weakened this king side to some extent not too much still the position is closed but not not too much okay now this queen d7 is a sign of deep preparation or i would say a multi-purpose move which protects the bishop on b7 one day this queen protects the pawn on b5 very important this pawn at the same time one day this e6 pawn uh, will also be there also one more thing is he is keeping this bishop on c8 maybe he can come to a6 after b4 so that is also planned so queen d7 is a multi-purpose move okay white has to do something white did play e4 now if white black takes on c3 ah then i will just take it and i think this has a good center and everything is just too good i think white is just better and you can play e5 Okay, so yeah, after e4, black played knight b4, queen was attacked, went back, and black knight came to d3. And uh, it looks as if the knight is on d3, and black has achieved, but still, black is behind development. Uh, if black was developed, then this is game over, black is winning. But now white has to do something, and what, what, what do you mean by doing something? White has to go for an assault. And white has to show to his opponent that I am better developed, I am down a pawn, but I will now it's time that I will hit you. So he plays e5. So he wants to open this bishop, he wants to disrupt the king side. Black plays bishop b7, white takes the pawn, white takes the pawn, and n4. Now white has lost the center uh, with e4, but it has he has created some weakness around the king side. Also, this weakness is also there. Okay, black develops, and this is a moment where white made a mistake. Actually, in the post-game analysis, uh, Carlson said that he didn't see the manual which black did right now. And uh, it was a good idea either to play knight f6, and maybe to play bishop e3 or say d3, and dismantle the knight on d3. So, knight f6 was called for, but... Uh, Sometimes you get so much engrossed in any calculation that uh, just like you can see that there are a lot of roads and if you feel that this is a main road where you want to go to the destination, you put so much energy in that road but suddenly there are sub directions or I would say the sub roads and suddenly that road becomes the main road and you miss it. So knight e5 was played. The idea is that if he takes something like this, this and this is under pressure and after knight g5 this bishop is open this pawn is under attack and white is just better maybe winning because i'm threatening queen e6 knight e6 maybe e5 this bishop is going to get deadly so this was the idea of carlson but uh, black was smart enough to play bishop e5 takes and he develops the piece the knight only is knight on rim is dim and suddenly the knight is coming to the b3 square now one could argue like what can you play knight c5 and knight c5 and it is possible to play this way but the problem is after bishop e3 again this knight comes to d3 and there is no follow up. Suddenly black is up a pawn, the pawn as I say if there was no pawn here then white is better but this pawn is like a hook, it is hanging that, it is supporting that knight on d3. So this could have been possible but Carlson made a good decision. And he completely made the waters muddy. What do you mean by muddy waters? He stirred the water so hard that it becomes uh, muddy water and it's very hard to make any analysis like how and it in a practical game it's a good idea. So Carlson ignores all this and he plays knight d6. So he's going for an exchange sacrifice. Black plays knight b3 attacking this and this. White simply played rook d1. He took on c1. And suddenly he is up in exchange. But uh, white do has some compensation, especially the weakness on the light squares and uh, the knight on d6. So let's see how this game went. Black played rook b8, supporting the bishop. White went on d1 to scare the queen. And this bishop a8 is an interesting move. So that now I think he can play b4, c3, or maybe c5 one day. So once this c5 comes, I think black is close to winning if he doesn't lose the bonds. Now you'll see what happens. White played bishop e4, so he's redirected this bishop to h7 pawn and some crazy attack might come 
with the rook left like this. But still, timing is important in chess. You cannot make all the three moves at one row and you can checkmate the king. This cannot happen. So, black understood what is white up to and black made the move c3. So, he went on for the pawn. The computer suggests queen e7, but it's little scary. Maybe rook d4 is coming, I think. Or maybe queen h5 first. Maybe here I can... I don't know, bishop g2, I won't play that. Maybe... Queen is an idea, it's queen g5, by the way. Uh, maybe rook d4 is possible. So the idea is, after this, I think I can play maybe bishop c2. Idea rook g4, but I think the problem is queen c1 is the problem. So I think queen e7 was, yeah, indeed a winning line. Uh, but this is very hard to see of queen g5 stopping rook d4. So white has to go back again and... <laughs> This is fine, just a6 and now c5 is coming. I think black should be better. It's very hard to find this though. Anyway, so after bishop e4, he played c3, he wanted to exchange off. Now, bc3 was possible. And this is fine, but white played queen c2, attacking f7, g6 is forced. Remember, after g6, this f6 square becomes weak. So bc3 comes, ba4, queen a4. Now let's see what happened in the game. He was attacking a7. Queen c4 came, and this, this, and now I'm threatening knight f6. This is what happened in the game, king h8. Now the threats are over, but this knight has a nice spot on d6 and f6. So this holds the balance, even though it's down in exchange, the monstrous knight, which has eight arms, like he can go eight ways. So it controls, so knight d6 came, he's not in a hurry to take the c5 pawn. And now we just take the c5 pawn. Remember, the a7 pawn is still under pressure and this c pawn can be dangerous. Remember, the c8 is controlled. Okay, so rook b8 is played, king g2. And now again, queen exchange is not possible because of rook a7 and uh, a6 is played. Okay, so this is a very unique move because uh, you don't want to give a check. At the same time, f3 weakens this. So this king h3 is a typical idea to step out and you can come back again rather than going on g1. Okay, so rook c6 is played, queen d4, king g8, and c4. And after queen c7, this position is dynamically equal, even though it looks as if white has some initiative. It looks as if black has some uh, exchange up. It's not easy to get anything out of this position. And maybe there were moves like rook a3, followed by rook b3, but these are all just, they will also end in a draw. So this was a computer recommendation, but Magnus wanted to end this game in a draw and he played the move queen g4. So he wants to attack e6. So naturally black took on d6 and black white played c5 and after queen c5 check came and he played rook a6. Idea is on f2 and after f4. Queen f5, queen f5, king f5. And this is a theoretically drawn position. Still, Carlsen played few moves as he does regularly. He tries his best to, I mean, he tries to create water from a stone. But uh, this position is not at all enough to do something. Quickly, we'll see the game. It was, it's right now. It's important to play king g8. If you play king f6, then it is a problem of playing king h4 maybe. Or... Yeah, maybe still it is not working, but there is a chance of playing g4 and g5 mate. Not right now, but maybe someday. Still, it, this would have been fine. But king g8 was played. He removed the rook. Nothing happened. This is important because if you take this pawn right now, then this pawn can be an issue. But he is holding ground and uh, g4 was played. This is all drawn. Nothing is there. And finally, the rook went to the longer side, longer side to give harass the king with checks. And uh, after this, with three-four reputation, the game was ended in a draw. So, is this justice? I would say yes, because uh, black had his chances. Uh, he missed it. Then white had his chances. Not much compared to black, but he still had it. He fought back. He gave the exchange. White played knight d6, 
and uh, dynamically this position is equal it, it was equal and uh, the justice was done so this concludes the second game now out of 14 two games have been done both of them draw that means both the players have one point remember a player who reaches 7.5 becomes the world champion so today is the third round i hope some fireworks will come but i think carlson is white today and uh, i think today carlson will show some much better performance than this game and he won't miss chances at the same time nepo is also playing solid chess and it will be a good battle so thank you very much for watching this is sohan padke from think chess and uh, see you tomorrow for the third game analysis bye bye